Hey friends, and welcome back to A Simple Truth. Now, if you remember, we've been again following our accounts of Judah's kings and Israel's kings. Today, we're going to be switching it up. So instead of uh, continuing to look at uh, Jeroboam's folly, in that case, I think yesterday was Jeroboam II's, uh, uh, his account, uh, and then looking at the other kings, we're going to switch it up and take a look at Jonah. Uh, we're going to be going through all four chapters. So it's a really short book, but there's a lot here and something that I just got definitely convicted of, uh, just, just looking it over, even mildly, even briefly uh, being convicted of that. So that's um, always, always humbling. Uh, so we'll take a look at that. And this is going to be Jonah chapters one through four. So chapter one. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went down into it to go from them, or to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God, and threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten the load. But Jonah had gone down into the lowest parts of the ship, and had laden down, and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise, call on your God. Perhaps God will consider us so that we may not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know for whose cause this trouble has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Please tell us, for whose cause is the trouble upon us? What is your occupation, and where do you come from? What is your country, and of what people are you? He said to them, I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid and said to him, Why have you done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you that the sea may be calm for us? For the sea was growing more tempestuous. And he said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will become calm for you. For I know that this great tempest is because of me. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to return to land, but they could not, for the sea continued to grow more tempestuous against them. Therefore, they cried out to the Lord and said, We pray, O Lord, please do not let us perish for this man's life, and do not charge us with innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done just as it pleased you. So they picked up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and offered a sacrifice to the Lord, and took vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord as Lord his God from the fish's belly, and he said, I cried out to the Lord because of my affliction, and he answered me, Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard my voice, for you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the floods surrounded me. Your billows, your waves passed over me. Then I said, I have been cast out of your sight. Yet I will look again towards your holy temple. The waters surrounded me, even to my soul. The deep closed around, around me. Weeds were wrapped around my head. I went down to the moorings of the mountains. The earth with its bars closed behind me forever. Yet you have brought up my life from the pit. O oh Lord my God, when your soul fainted within when my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy, but I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay what I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. So the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Chapter three. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and preach it, preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three-day journey in extent. And Jonah began to enter the city on his first day's walk. Then he cried out and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. 
So the people of Nineveh believed God, proclaimed a fast, and put on sackcloth from the greatest to the least of them. And then the, then the word came to the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne and laid aside his robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published throughout Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily to God. Yes, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence that is in his hands. Who can tell if God will turn and relent and turn away from his fierce anger so that we may not perish? Then God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God relented from the disaster he, would, he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Chapter 4. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he became angry. So he prayed to the Lord and said, Ah, oh, Lord, was, I not, was this not what I said when I was still in my country? Therefore I fled previously to Tarshish, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. Therefore now, O Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. Then the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? So Jonah went out of the city and sat on the east side of the city. There he made himself a shelter and sat under it in the shade till he might see what would become of the city. And the Lord prepared a plant and made it come up over Jonah that it might be shade for his head to deliver him from his misery. So Jonah was very grateful for the plant. But as morning dawned the next day, God prepared a worm, and so it damaged the plant that it withered. And it happened when the sun rose that God prepared a vehement east wind, and the sun beat on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. Then he wished death for himself and said, It is better for me to die than to live. Then God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? And he said, It is right for me to be angry, even to death. But the Lord said, You have not had pity on the plant you have had pity on the plant, for which you did not labor, nor made it grow, which came up in the night and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh, that great city, in which there are more than one hundred and twenty thousand persons, who cannot discern between their right hand and their left, and much livestock? So that is it. Just four, four simple chapters, but definitely uh, did not escape me that I am very much guilty of that same sin. I mean, we see, we see Jonah wishing for judgment, and that is often what I wish when I look at all the evil going on in the world, and and God sees infinitely more than I see, and infinitely more than Jonah saw. And yet, God wanted repentance. Um, God wanted these people to turn that they might be saved. And even in my limited view, and even though I'm guilty of all this, I still want judgment for the evil that's going on. And God will judge. Um, in fact, Jesus is coming back to judge. But in the, in the meantime, and before then, we're all subject to to repentance. We need to repent. And I am just as lost as everyone else is without Jesus. I am just as lost. And it's so easy for me to get self-righteous. Um, and maybe not explicitly so, but definitely in my head, uh, there's a lot of the undercurrent of, well, at least I'm not like dot, dot, dot. And I need to remember that, that all are fallen. Um, that's exactly what it says, that all are fallen. Every single person has fallen short of the glory of God. And that very, very, very much includes myself. Um, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And I just need to remember that. So seeing this, seeing Jonah just get mad about that, about that plant that just means nothing. And God putting that quickly in perspective, saying, hey, a plant is nothing compared to a life. The life isn't just one life, but a hundred and what did we say? 150,000, 120, 150,000. Um, so thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And God knows the depth of their sin. And yet he still wanted to save them, still wanted to them to repent. So uh, that is what I walked away from uh, very humbly today. Uh, as always, friends, <laughs> thanks so much for joining. And I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. And see ya.